Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again for another country guitar lesson. This time I'm going to teach you two simple solos to help you deal with this idea of playing over chord changes in a country setting. We're going to be looking at the chord progression to the song I've Got a Tiger by the Tail, which is a Buck Owens tune, uh, excellent song and a country staple to be honest, not just this song but the progression itself. If you do enjoy this lesson I would urge you to head on over to Amazon and check out one of my books, I've got quite a few uh, available there, all uh, very well received bestsellers. I'm sure you will enjoy them. Uh, in particular, I would for this type of thing, I would probably recommend you check out either uh, country guitar soloing techniques, or if you want to learn a little bit more about you know putting solos together and learning how the great players played, including Don Rich, who we'll talk about in this video, then I would recommend uh, Country Guitar Heroes: 100 Licks for Country Guitar. I'm sure you will enjoy them. Anyway, on with the lesson. So before we listen to the first solo, it's just worth pointing out what the chord progression actually is in this song. Uh, very, very simple. It's an E chord for two bars. And then go to an A7 for two bars. And then got a B7 for, again for two bars. And then E7, oh sorry, E to B7. So it's an eight bar chord progression. Two bars of E, two bars of A, two bars of B, E followed by B. Let me just play that in its entirety for you now. It sounds like this. You get the idea. So very simple chord progression. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut away to a little solo that I recorded just one time through and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to break it down and explain to you what I'm thinking of when I play a solo like this. So it sounds like this. Okay, so a big part of the country guitar vocabulary is giving chords respect, playing the sound of the chords. And as there are three chords to deal with here, I'm going to approach each one slightly differently. So I'm, this is, you know, ultimate beginners type stuff. I'm going to deal with this in the simplest way possible. I'm going to first deal with some of the lower register, lower range of the guitar, and then we're going to do something again, open position still, but in the on the higher strings. So as an approach over the E chord. There are a lot of notes that you could play, but what you'll find when you listen to someone like Don Rich, who was Buck Owens guitar player for the uh, first part of his career, before he died, uh, what you'll find he often played was a kind of hybrid of the E minor pentatonic scale over something like this. So in the open position we would have... A scale that I'm sure you're all very familiar with. The variation we're going to put on that would be the second fret on the low E string and I tend to play that and put this bend on there. That just stops the scale being too minor in nature because we're, we're bending that second fret either to the third fret or to the fourth fret. They both work. The third fret is, is the bluesy flat third and the fourth fret would be the uh, major third of the chord. So they're, they're both quite pleasing. So you can really play anything there, but what I played on the solo, uh, I think there was a walk in, a lead in where I go, um, what do I play? Yeah, simple melody. So second fret on the D string, uh, then the second fret open on the A, and then we've got that bend on the low E string. And we hit that open E string. So that's a, a pickup bar, and then the actual two bars of E happen. So I play a simple riff based approach. So it's very much a you know country guitar riff rather than a solo, but you know it's totally acceptable to play those types of ideas in a solo section like this. So one more time. Not too tricky. So open E, second fret, open to second fret, pull off, repeat, and then descend. So 
So that would be the notes that we're going to be using over an E chord in this setting. Now when the chord changes to A, what I'm likely to play is the A major pentatonic scale. Now you could call this F sharp minor pentatonic, A major, the same notes. What I want you to be visualizing, I guess, would be this A chord, this A form. <laughs> That's the way I tend to finger that. It's my little finger on the fifth fret of the low E string. That's my A root note. And then I'm barring on the second fret of the D, G, and B strings. That's not a chord that I tend to play, but it's a position from which I'll see a scale. Uh, and that scale would be... Those would be the notes of the A major pentatonic scale. Let me just play those for you one more time. So that's five on the low E, and then two four, two four, two four, two five, and two five. Not too tricky at all. Like I say, you could see that as being F sharp minor pentatonic, but I think seeing it from that A root note is important. Now when I tend to play this, I will actually not play that low E string, I'll play the open A string. So you really have this. So fitting around that chord form. So the lick that I play would just be... So the open A, two, three, four. That's pick, pick, slide. Then we have two, four on the D string. Two on the G string, repeat that note, down to four, and then the top note, play twice. Now that very much sounds like the chord progression so far. very much sounds like those chords so all good now for the B chord I strip it back play something very very simple I'm just going to play the second fret on the uh, A string I'm going to slide into it from a semitone below like this What better way is there to outline the notes of a B chord than to play the note B, uh, especially after playing that lick in A. It very much sounds like the chord. I actually play that three times and then descend down that uh, same scale that we played over the E, because to me, when I'm playing over this B7 chord, I'm thinking of either B major pentatonic or that static B root note, but also a bit of E blues. All of those notes are gonna work, but you know, that's a slightly more advanced approach. Limiting ourselves to just that root note is always going to work quite nicely. So if I put all three of those ideas together, we've outlined the chord changes in the simplest way possible. E minor pentatonic for the E, A major pentatonic for the A, and then just the note B on the uh, on the B7 chord. <laughs> just to finish, you know, whatever you like. Whatever it is you happen to play. So any of those ideas are absolutely going to work. Uh, hopefully that made some sort of sense. <laughs> I'm going to cut in the solo one more time just so you can hear it in context. So that sounds like this.
So again, a bit of an ad break now. If you did enjoy that, like I say, do head on over to Amazon com.co.uk and check out one of my country books either you know country guitar soloing techniques would be a great one or you could also check out 100 country 100 licks for country guitar as another great one i also have a compilation book which contains three of my country books all in one for one low price so if you want to learn a ton more country licks um, i would suggest you check that out anyway on to the second solo so that's going to sound like this Right, so we're still in the open position. Hopefully you could tell that mostly around this first to fourth fret area. I don't go above that. And the approach is very much the same. I'm thinking E blues over the E chord. I'm thinking A major pentatonic over the A. I'm thinking B, uh, just the note B, with a little bit of the E blues scale over the uh, B chord. And it sounds good. So the first lick I play, if memory serves me correct, classic blues lick, right? <laughs> words to that effect. So sliding from 2 to 4 on the G, 3rd fret B, and then open E. Uh, so after playing those notes, we then slide from 4 down to 2, open G, 2nd fret D, and then we hammer from open G to the 1st fret G. And why do we do that? Well, because that note's in the chord, right? Any old pentatonic phrasing is going to work here. Like I say, it's not about learning the solo that I'm teaching you, although that might be of use to you. It's about learning the roadmap that I'm using in order to help me play over these chord changes. Make sense? So that's my E lick. Now over the A, I get a little bit more country and I play this. Now all of those notes, All in that A major pentatonic scale. I'm hitting 4 and 5 on the G and B strings and bending the 4th fret up but keeping the 5th fret where it is. Release and I play a double stop on the 2nd fret, 4th fret on the uh, D string and then the double stop again. And after the lick in E, now for our lick outlining B, I'm doing the exact same thing as I, I did before, lots of uh, stuttering there, but on the higher octave, so still it outlines that B chord, right? And then I'm going to play an open position blues lick. could be anything. I think on the recording I play this. So so that's my repeating B note and then I'm hitting the third fret on the G, sliding down to two, pulling off to the open string and then descending down two and naught on the uh, uh, D and A strings. Now when I'm there, I think again, if memory serves me correctly, I do this kind of Brent Mason-esque. So it's kind of uh, like E blues scale, two open on the D, two one or on the um, A string, that would be the blues scale part. And then I hit three on the E string, slide up to four, and then come up. 2, 4, and 2 on the A string, and then end on that E note. Which brings me back to that E chord, right? Mm. 
So as I say, tons of ideas that you can do with this. So I'm just going to play that solo slowly for you and then I'll cut in the original recording. So it sounds like this. So here's me playing that over the backing track one more time for you. Now I hope you got some enjoyment out of that lesson guys, uh, and if you did and you want more, again head on over to Amazon, search for Levi Clay or Country Guitar and you are going to probably find some of my books, they are they are popular on Amazon and uh, yeah, um, people enjoy them, so um, you may too. If not, cool, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like and share this video with your friends. You could also actually be like one of these awesome people over here, these are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com, they keep these videos coming to you, so thank you very much guys for your support. If you would like to be like them and uh, get your name on that list, well actually you can join me on Patreon for as little as one dollar and it gets you access to my private patron only Facebook group. Lots of cool discussions going on in there, tutorials, uh, transcription challenges, you know, live stream announcements, good good level of discussion. I'm a big fan of uh, that group. I love that, and there's a good group of people over there. So you can check me out on Patreon by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you can find two more of my videos here and here. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. If you do check out one of my books, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, do leave a review and let me know how you get on. Much love, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.